ponder the question. What if? Time. Space. Reality. Excitement? I am the Watcher. I am your guide through these vast new realities. Look, buddy, anything sounds impressive when you use that voice. I am the Sin Master. I am your guide through these vast inconsistencies. See? What if? Roll commercials. We're not even out of the opening credits yet. Also, why the question mark, Marvel? I mean, if you drop the ellipses, it could be a complete sentence, but once you add those, it indicates there's more of a sentence to come, which means the punctuation should follow the sentence. This should either be, what if? What if? Or if you want to get really freaky and indicate the return ellipses, what if? This just looks like a question mark that accidentally has four downstairs tittles. That's right, I said tittles. At humanity's darkest hour, a skinny kid from Brooklyn became Captain America. Using your precious little storytelling time to rehash movies we've already seen. The show isn't called What Was Marvel. Bring on Swole Carter already. Agent Carter, wouldn't you be more comfortable in the booth? That's the moment that created a new universe. Except things must have already diverged, because in the version we've seen, Steve was already in the harder, better, faster, stronger machine. And this kernel looked a lot more like Stranix from Under Siege. Originally, this explosion happens after Steve has been transformed. Why would Penny's arbitrary decision to choose ringside seats to the buffeting result in a change in the timing of a plan that had already been set in motion long before said decision was made? Am I going to point out every tiny discrepancy between this and the first Avenger? Only time will tell. Stark, you go in! What? Are you crazy? I push the buttons. I'm the buttons guy. The church I grew up in had a buttons guy. He wore all sorts of weird buttons on his suit. He seemed fine until one day he brought a piece of wooden axe to service and started chopping in front of the congregation without warning while shouting about pruning the evil branches. Keep an eye on Stark is all I'm saying. Agent Carter, what are you doing? This is our only chance. Now! Is it though? You still have all the super juice, and the machine itself appears to be intact. I feel like somebody really wanted a new timeline, but didn't put the time in to make it all line up. Start! Don't do this! Is that Bradley Whitford? Was he in the original Cap movie? You think you can just add Brad to your little TV show to make it feel more important? Whitford is a treasure, and I'm sitting you for not having him in the movie, too. And yes, I know he played the same role in a short that was attached to the home release of Iron Man 3, but do you think I watched that? I barely even watched Iron Man 3. Did it work? And then some. You won't be needing those hills anymore. She never needed them. Ever. Also, she's hulked out here so much that that cami should be shredded. Those clothes wouldn't have stood a chance, and Buff Carter should be in the Buff Carter right now. For authenticity reasons, of course. Women aren't soldiers. They sure as hell don't fight on the front lines. They might break a nail. Colonel Flynn survives this. Seriously, Colonel Flynn is such an asshole in this show, they might as well have named him Colonel Asshole. Colonel Hole? Colonel-oscopy? Not according to Colonel Flynn, that weapons great moron! Funny reveal. But you do realize this means that this room had at least 15 of these giant weights, and she's thrown this many of them into this poor defenseless wall. Kind of a dick move if you ask me. Which you did when you clicked on the video, so this one's on you. Uh, it could be worse. Flynn could stick you on one of those USO tours. Wear a crazy costume, being told to smile 10 times a day. Why isn't Peggy doing the morale boosting rounds like Steve did in the original timeline? If anything, and I'm not saying this is right, wouldn't the army brass see a woman as even more morale boosting for the men on the front line? Bucky. Bucky. I'd hope, perhaps naively, that crossing into a new space-time continuum would be enough to save us from the whole Mad About Bucky subplot that stalked us for over a decade. We haven't talked about this animation style yet, but I'm pretty much hating it. It's like rotoscoping got cell shading pregnant after an intense three-way with some binary code, and then drove out to the middle of the uncanny valley for the birth. Then why do you try so hard to hide it? So hard? More like not hard enough. This ancient mystical artifact of immeasurable power is kept safe and secure in a box inside a wall guarded by one elderly bearded gentleman and can be accessed by pushing one f***ing button. Heck, Howard Stark could have even completed that mission. Button guy call back. This doesn't concern you. You're lucky to be in the room. Title of my sex tape? Why did Stark redesign the costume in this very tasteful shade of God Save the Queen? Yes, Carter is British, but she still works for the US, right? Or is a female Captain America just that one step too far? That was brilliant! 
Let's give it another go. Is the show insinuating that Captain Crunches is trying to figure out these things for the first time in actual enemy combat? Or is that just the rush nature of trying to squeeze a whole story into 30 minutes? Either way, Carter's new look is amazing. And it's worth pointing out that Marvel is directly indicating that the cultural idea of female beauty could use a little beefing up. I, for one, am loving it. And this sin removal is for letting Peggy be completely union jacked. Also, if Peggy looks in a mirror at some point and says, that is Great Britain's ass, I'm giving back all the sins. Are you seeing this? Who is she talking to? The action in this episode and this scene in particular is easier to follow and of better quality than 90% of the action we're presented with in the damn movies. Another sin off. Bad guy cracks his neck calmly as an indication that he's super tough, cliche. Scheisse. Exactly. Is that it? Why does everyone keep underestimating how important the Tesseract is? Red Skull went to all that trouble to find the damn thing only to immediately lose it by allowing it to be transported by these clowns instead of a battalion of tanks. I trust you know what to do with that. Oh, I know exactly what to do with this. Well, I'm glad somebody does because it's been over a decade now and I still don't have a clue what the damn thing does. Does Super Soldier Serum also provide actual physical skills like jumping a motorcycle through a fence? I get the strength and dexterity thing, but wouldn't you still need actual proprioceptive training beyond the inherent physical qualities? Or do they just matrix that shit into your brain as well? What is the point of this excellent vantage point if you wait until after the enemy has breached the gates and killed three of your comrades? Did your friends here hurt you? Did they steal your bratwurst from the communal fridge? Air support! Send air support! Copy that! Rogers, inbound! Now, admittedly, this Iron Giant man is very cool, but wouldn't it have been cooler to let this be Captain Carter's story? Feels like we're stepping on her moment in the spotlight by allowing Steve to swoop in and be the hero in this timeline as well. Well, then we better start dancing! Captain Carter's dancing looks strangely like murder. Oh, I miss a good whiskey. Then why did you immediately ruin it by putting ice in it? I'm still that skinny kid from Brooklyn. Now just in a big metal suit. A big metal suit powered by an infinite power source that's capable of destroying tanks and basically anything in its path. Yeah, you got nothing, Brooklyn. You're more than the suit. The suit is nothing without the man inside. You're my hick, but it's never... <laughs> Jeep. Grand Theft snog blocking. Honestly, I have no idea why Bucky and these other five guys are even needed on this mission. If the $60 million super soldier in the Infinity Stone powered suit of armor can't handle it, I fail to see how Steven's other love interest and his buddies are gonna make the difference. Something about this smells as fresh as three day old fish. Or maybe you're just afraid of trains. This dig about Bucky being afraid of trains is very specific and only really makes sense if Peggy knows that Bucky was lost and presumed dead after he was thrown from a train in the other timeline, which she most certainly shouldn't. Look at the size of that zip line! Are you telling me the best plan you could come up with with getting on the train was to set up a thousand foot high zip line, stretching over a mile and then time it perfectly? Base jumping makes more sense than this, and base jumping never makes sense! Woo. Thanks! You almost ripped my arm off! <sighs> you said the Hydra Stomper was indestructible! It is! Was! His name is Steve Rogers. Not the Hydra Stomper. Hold your horses there, Peggy. To be fair, they were specifically arguing about the suit being indestructible. No one is under the impression that Steve is. Too soon? Too bad. I will tell you nothing. He told me everything. Ha 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 ha! Implied torture tactics. Oh, you rapscallion. Come on, Howard. We might need someone to push a button. Button guy call back. Ah, ours was funnier. If this is the big Hydra hideout, why does its external defenses consist of only half a dozen soldiers, an uncoded gate release button, and zero sentries? Where are the damn tanks? Where are the snipers? Why is Castle? Who needs a plan? I have a shield. A shield is not a plan! What if Howard Stark was excellent at TV since? The champion of Hydra has risen! Your super powerful ultimate champion world dominating being from another dimension sure looks suspiciously like an octopus. So no plan B in the event that you were unable to communicate with this extra dimensional creature, thus being unable to immediately bend it to your will? You just get squished? Alrighty then. Stark was right. Indestructible. Uh, Steve! Steve! How thoughtful of evil Hydra agents to keep Steve in the same room as his super suit, despite the dozens of other rooms that are no doubt available in this castle. Sherman efficiency, man. You can't beat it. Now where's Peggy? She drew the high card. This suit could give out at any minute, and Bucky thinks up is enough specificity to allow Steve to get to Peggy in the shortest amount of time possible. At the rate it's 
spreading it could devour Europe. How the f did she manage to extrapolate that one? It hasn't even filled this room yet. What makes her think it will continue to grow to continent devouring size? Excuse me, I'm just gonna grab my sword of unbelievable convenience. Red, green, blue. Who paints the bottom blue? The blue man group? The Smurfs? Eiffel 65? Shall I continue? Don't tell me the American playboy needs help pushing buttons. Was that a clitoris joke? Because I think there's a clitoris joke in there, but I'm having a really difficult time locating it. Did you miss me? For the second time in this outing, the man has come to save the day and rescue the female hero. Did no one at Marvel realize this was a dumbass idea which fundamentally undermines the impact of this female Captain America story? Where's Steve Rogers? The war ended almost 70 years ago. That's a strange way of saying, who's Steve Rogers? Also, apparently everything else went exactly the same, even though you changed the timeline. Guess there's no Carter fly effect. Who's gonna tell Ashton? I observe all that transpires here, but I do not, cannot, will not interfere. Then is there really any point to you? At all? Steve! Steve? Rogers! Steve! 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 Go get him, Steve. His name is Steve Rogers. Fish are friends, not food. Hang on, I'll be right back. I'll be right back! Hey Vasquez, have you ever been mistaken for a man? No. Have you? Is this nuclear? No, 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 this sucker's electrical! Don't say it! Don't you say it! left! Come on! Steve! Steve! You are who you choose to be. Superman. Hi. I noticed your glass was getting a little low, so I took the liberty of bringing you another apple martini. And I couldn't help but notice you look a lot like my next girlfriend. Thanks. Try to listen. So do you like Cuban food? Hmm. That is sort of an oaky afterbirth. Hold it, hold it. Is this a kissing book? Tony Stark was able to build this in a cave! With a box of scraps! Well, I'm sorry. Tony Stark. Please. 